Hi, welcome back. I was just practicing my Morse code with this new decoder that I just built. I just got these new boards back from Osh Park and they really turned out well. This time everything seemed to be perfect. I didn't need to cut any traces or make any modifications. With the magic of video editing, you can watch me build this thing at eight times normal speed. So stick around, and I'll show you how we can change one of these into one of these. Let's have some fun. We'll start with the resistors. We have one 1000 ohm resistor, two 470 ohms, and three 150 ohm resistors. R1 is the pull-up resistor. It holds pin 1 of our microcontroller high so it doesn't reset unless we want to do it when we push a button. These two resistors are current limiting resistors for our LEDs. The 150 ohm resistors are scattered across the board. One is used to link the speaker to the circuit, another one sets the range of the tones we're going to decode, and the third one simply dims the LCD if we don't want it so bright. Now we'll install the LEDs. The red one will flicker when there's noise and the blue one will blink with the code. They'll go right here in these two holes. LEDs have two leads, a long one and a short one. Put the long lead in the square hole and the short one in the round hole. I'm going to bend them here so that the LED will stick up off the edge of the board. This is a crystal that will set the timing for the microcontroller. It's got two leads. Polarity doesn't matter. It's this nice shiny little device that goes right in here. There's a dollop of paint on this blue capacitor so you can tell it from these three over here. These on the card are mustard colored and the last two are red. The blue capacitors are going to work with our tone decoder chip. Make sure you put the one with a dot of paint in C1. Three blue ones are all the same value. They'll go in C2, C3, and C5. These guys are 0.01 microfarad capacitors. They go between 5 volts and ground at the two main chips here. They filter voltage fluctuations from these sensitive parts. These 22 picofarad capacitors go between the crystal and ground. The project calls for three little push button switches. One of them will be the reset switch, which we can use to reset the microcontroller. The other two serve different functions depending on whether or not a speaker is attached to the board.
Now I'm going to install the IC sockets. Notice that there's a notch at one end of the sockets. Let's see it located here. You want to be sure that notch lines up with the notch there on the board. Right now I'll only solder one pin. There's a lot of pins here and I want to be sure that I get it right. I check it, make sure everything's lined up and straight the way I want it. Now I'm going to solder only one more at the opposite corner of the socket. One more check. Everything's fine. Now I'll go ahead and solder the rest. There's 28 pins here. If I make a mistake, I'm not going to be able to undo this one. So there. Looks good. Do the same thing with the smaller sockets. Look at the notch on the silk screen, match up the notch on the socket. I'll solder only one pin. Much easier to remove one pin if it's not the way I want it. Give it a little check, add the other one, line up the notch, one more check, okay, we're good to go. These are 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone jacks. We'll put one on each side of the board. Electrically, they are wired the same. We'll take audio from the HF radio and plug it into one, it doesn't matter which one, and headphones into the other. This is a little JST power connector jack and plug. I'll solder it right here into the board making sure that the red lead goes by the plus sign. Kit includes a packet with lots of header pins in it. These are going to go all over the board. I like to put lots of points on the board where you can tap it and do stuff. It allows you to modify the board, do some of your own thing. I'm going to use the female header as a little tool to stabilize the one I'm working on. It also helps me line things up. Comes in real handy. There. I'm not going to put the last long 16 pin header in it this time. No, nope, that'll come later when we're ready to install the LCD panel. We'll just take this one and set it aside. 
these two electrolytic capacitors are part of the power supply circuit. Electrolytic capacitors have a long lead and a short lead and they are polarized. There's a white stripe on there showing the negative side, but you can know, note that I'm putting the long lead into the square hole. That would be the positive side. I'll solder one pin of each and then flip it back again. Check it before I solder the second pin. This is the 5 volt voltage regulator. It's got a little tab on it, kind of a heat sink, and it's polarized too. That tab has to line up with the stripes there that you see on the uh, silk screen. Again, I'll solder just one pin. That gives me a chance to bend the component a little bit. I like to see them stand straight up. Notice that the heat sink will be facing the LEDs. That's important. Before we install the ICs, let's make sure that 5 volts and ground isn't shorted out. No beep? We're good to go. Now I'll hook up a 9 volt battery and we'll check the voltage coming off of our regulator. 4.92, that's 5 volts if I ever saw it. We'll add a little jumper here to D8 and D5 and we'll take the other end of those leads and I'll ground them. The red LED will light. There it goes. It's on. And now the blue one. Yes. Okay. That's good too. Let's prepare the LCD panel. The kit comes with standoffs. There are two different sizes. I want to be sure that I get the short ones. I'm going to put them on the back side of the panel and fasten them with the little black screws. We're going to add a small washer to each of those posts. That'll make up the correct distance we need for these uh, header pins that are going to go in between the two boards. Make everything sure lines up. We'll fasten these two down temporarily and looks good. We'll get out to solder. Now we can build a cool little stand for the rest of the hardware that came in the kit. These black little feet tilt the board for easy viewing. Now let's install the ICs. Again, check the notch, insert it carefully. Sometimes you'll have to bend the legs on these things to get them to fit in. Make sure you get the right ICs in the right sockets and the notches line up with the notches that we have on the board. Okay, hold your breath. Let's power this little puppy up. Aha! There it works. You might have to adjust the contrast which is that little potentiometer on the back side of the board.
This will change the brightness of the display. Now it's brighter, so you have two choices there. This is the first time I hooked it up to the radio. The only CW that I could find was W1AW's Morse code practice. I chopped off the LEDs at the top of the screen, but I think you can see the blue one blinking with the code. The red one flickers with noise on the band, but it'll blink with the blue one when it hears an actual tone. This newest version of the project allows me to hook a speaker and a key right up to the board and have a way of practicing Morse code. for the key and the speaker are clearly labeled on the back side of the board. <laughs> 